buckle up because we're about to embark on a thrilling journey through one of the most captivating tales of the high seas. Get ready to dive into the epic saga of the Titanic, where luxury meets disaster in the most jaw-dropping way imaginable. Join us as we unravel the mysteries of this iconic shipwreck. From haunting letters to loved ones to the last ever meal of the ill-fated passengers, these are the 20 terrifying things recovered from the Titanic. A letter. Ship steward Richard Geddes, amidst all the hustle and bustle in the Titanic, decided to pen a letter to his dear wife. Little did he know that this letter would go on to hold such historical significance. In this captivating letter, Richard recounts a heart-stopping near miss that could have changed the course of history. Did you know that the Titanic came dangerously close to colliding with not just one, but two other colossal ships, the New York and the Oceanic? Well, now you do. But here's where the story takes a tragic turn. Despite avoiding crashes with these ships, Richard Geddes, along with over 1,500 passengers and crew, perished in the infamous Titanic disaster. Fast forward to today, and this extraordinary letter is up for auction. Believe it or not, this letter could fetch up to a staggering 18,000 pounds. The letter, enclosed in a white star line envelope, is up for auction alongside official paperwork relating to Getty's life and tragic demise, as well as captivating pictures of Richard and his beloved wife. It's a glimpse into the lives of someone who actually traveled on that ill-fated voyage. If you ask us, that's priceless. Pocket Watch this magnificent silver timepiece, a mere three inches in size, once belonged to a gentleman named Sinai Kentor, who was on the doomed Titanic voyage. This remarkable watch adorned with Hebrew numbering on its dial and embossed design of Moses holding the Ten Commandments on its back just fetched a jaw-dropping $57,500 at auction. Wow! Sinai Cantor and his wife Miriam embarked on that fateful voyage from Russia to New York back in April 1912. Little did they know what lay ahead. As destiny would have it, Sinai tragically drowned when the Titanic sank and his lifeless body was found eight days later. It's a heartbreaking tale, but Miriam miraculously managed to survive the disaster. Miriam fought to reclaim her late husband's belongings, including this very watch. The timepiece remained in the hands of the family, but now it's found a new home. In fact, the buyer, John Moitel, is no stranger to Titanic artifacts. He's a California museum owner who already possesses three other timepieces from the Titanic disaster. Talk about a passionate collector. Despite the watch's rusty appearance, water damage, and severe stains, it holds immense religious and historical significance. That's what makes it so valuable to collectors and enthusiasts alike. Violin Wallace Hartley was the fearless Titanic musician who led his band with unwavering dedication until the very end. Hartley's commitment to music was next level as he protected his cherished rosewood violin by strapping it to himself, despite the ship sinking. Believe it or not, just 10 days after the Titanic sinking, Hartley's lifeless body was found floating in the water, clutching that same violin. It really shows his undying passion for music, even in his final moments. Now let's rewind. This violin had great sentimental value for Hartley, as it was a heartfelt gift from his fiance. Tragedy struck again when his fiance passed away in 1939, and the violin mysteriously disappeared, seemingly lost forever. In 2006, the remarkable violin was discovered in an unsuspecting English attic. After seven years of tests, its authenticity was confirmed. Despite some water damage, the violin remains in remarkable condition, though unplayable. It serves as a haunting reminder of the Titanic's tragic end and Hartley's ultimate serenade as the ship went down. Yep, it's thought that Hartley may have actually played one last song with his band as the Titanic sank to the bottom of the ocean. Pretty crazy, right? The Big Piece in an awe-inspiring spectacle, a massive 13 by 30 foot section of the Titanic's hull, weighing a staggering 15 tons, was gracefully lifted onto the roof of San Francisco's Yerba Buena Gardens at the Mitreon. Just look at that thing. The journey of this hull fragment is nothing short of remarkable. Recovered in 1998 from the actual wreckage site of the Titanic, which lies a mind-boggling two and a half miles beneath the ocean's surface. This extraordinary artifact bears six portals, 
with three of them still displaying their original intact glass. Considering what it's been through, this big hunk of metal is not in bad condition at all. There's no way that you could call this junk. To safeguard this priceless treasure, the whole fragment underwent desalinization and received an acid-resistant coating, shielding it from further rust erosion. Yep, something this historical just has to be protected at all costs. Vials of Perfume During a dive amidst the debris surrounding the titanic wreckage, divers made an unexpected find, a leather pouch filled with numerous vials containing rare perfume oil. Perfume under the sea? Whatever next? Here's where the story takes a fascinating turn. The perfume oil turned out to be the long-lost creation of a renowned German perfumer named Adolf Salfield. Astonishingly, he tragically left his life's work behind on the ill-fated Titanic. That's right, no one ever got to smell this concoction ever again. Until now, that is. Let's fast forward to the present. RMS Titanic Incorporated, the proud salvagers of the Titanic wreckage, is in discussions with various manufacturers to transform this precious discovery into a marketable fragrance. That's right, you could actually wear the scent of the Titanic. They are even thinking of calling it the heart of the ocean, paying homage to the iconic necklace worn by Kate Winslet's character in the film Titanic. The perfume oil itself is said to smell of floral notes, including the fragrances of lavender and roses. Sounds pretty nice, right? Now, the company intends to blend and synthesize the aroma oils to craft a truly one-of-a-kind perfume. It's a labor of love and a tribute to the Titanic's legacy. And guess what? This Titanic perfume is expected to be available for purchase just in time for Christmas. What a unique gift. Cherub Statue in the depths of the legendary Titanic lies a hidden gem, the Bronze Cherub. Situated at the bottom of the magnificent Grand Staircase, this treasure held a captivating secret. When the iceberg struck, the secure dome protecting the staircase was breached, causing water to rush down the steps. Amongst the chaos, it's thought that someone clung to the base of the Cherub as the room filled with water. Their grip proved too much and the Cherub became a casualty of the ship's fate. Yikes. In 1987, an expedition led by the RMS Titanic Incorporated discovered the forgotten cherub amidst the wreckage. It was rescued and brought to Santa Fe, New Mexico, where its restoration journey began. Through a two-year-long endeavor, experts removed excess salt, ensuring its preservation. Yep, this eerie statue has to be one of the most haunting objects of all time. Last Meal Menu Check out this last meal eaten aboard the Titanic before it tragically sank on April 14, 1912. Yep, this grub was a significant part of the passenger's experience. One first-class passenger, an American banker's wife, escaped the disaster with a souvenir menu in her purse. A lucky and valuable keepsake. Sadly, less than a quarter of the third-class passengers survived. They dined in a room resembling a school cafeteria with long tables for communal meals served in the middle of the day. Instead of a fancy menu, they received a single menu and card covering all the day's meals, reflecting an efficient approach. In contrast, the first-class dining room offered a luxurious experience. The elite passengers enjoyed elaborate multi-course meals influenced by French cuisine, served by waiters in their finest attire. Basically, you ate like kings and queens in first class. However, in third class, you were more likely to eat dishes like porridge and gruel. Some things never change. Three Bells of Titanic These remarkable whistles adorn the Titanic and its sister ships, the Olympic-class liners. These behemoth whistles weighed 750 pounds each, standing over 4 feet tall and were crafted from durable bronze. They are pretty majestic, right? Their steam-powered design featured three chambers, creating a powerful sound that echoed across the ocean. Sounded once a day at noon and when departing ports, the Olympic-class liners even held an automated whistle-blowing system for efficiency. In 1993, a salvage expedition recovered a set of Titanic's whistles, restoring them for exhibition. In 1999, at an exhibition in St. Paul, Minnesota, the whistles were given new life with a blast of compressed air. Astonishingly, over 100,000 people flocked to witness the sound of the Titanic's whistle after 87 years of silence. Just imagine hearing the sound that the Titanic passengers heard all those years ago. It's enough to give you goosebumps. White Star Line Binoculars Believe it or not, these were the very binoculars that graced the decks of the magnificent RMS Titanic. 
These trusty tools were a crucial part of the ship's equipment, mainly used by the officers and lookouts. Yep, binoculars on a ship were like secret weapons, focusing on specific areas that demanded closer inspection. When something was sighted far away, these powerful lenses were whipped out to bring it into sharp focus. Now, here's where things get complicated. Before the Titanic embarked on its fateful journey, the binoculars for the lookouts were locked away in a secure locker. The keys were accidentally whisked off the ship, and the absence of accessible binoculars on the Titanic became a subject of many conspiracies. People couldn't help but wonder if having these binoculars within reach would have made a difference. Would they have spotted the iceberg sooner? Would lives have been saved? It's a debate that has raged among historians for years. However, most people believe that the Titanic still would have hit the iceberg, even if they could have gotten hold of their binoculars. It's one of history's biggest what-ifs. What do you think? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Gold Locket This elegant piece of jewelry is a golden locket that once belonged to Virginia Estelle McDowell Clark, a first-class passenger on the Titanic. This lady was on a belated honeymoon trip with her husband, Walter Miller Clark, when tragedy struck. As the Titanic plunged into chaos, Virginia found herself lowered into a lifeboat, while her husband bravely stayed behind ultimately losing his life. Now, fast forward to 1994, when an expedition set out to explore the wreck of the Titanic. Among the discoveries made was a small travel bag that belonged to Virginia and Walter. Inside that bag, a treasure trove awaited. The gold locket, along with some gambling chips, cufflinks, and even a toiletry item were carefully retrieved from the depths. This exquisite locket, engraved with the initials VC, serves as a poignant reminder of a love story interrupted by tragedy. Now that's what we call a family heirloom. And now it's time for our open discussion. Yep, there's a mind-boggling theory that will make your jaw drop like rose heart-shaped necklace into the ocean. Some conspiracy theorists claim that Jack, the dashing artist from the film Titanic, was not a mere fictional character, but a real-life hero lost to history. Could Jack's existence be more than just movie magic? Well, some conspiracy nuts seem to think so, but what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments section below by using the hashtag OpenDiscussion. Doll's Head We're about to dive into the mysterious tale of Ava Hart's beloved doll, left behind in her birth when she escaped the sinking of the Titanic on that fateful day, on April 14, 1912. Can you believe that this creepy doll's head was discovered a whopping 2,000 meters underwater not too long ago? It was Captain Abel Frederico Nugarius of the shipping company Argenbell who stumbled upon this haunting relic from the depths. Captain Nugarius held onto the doll's head for the next 15 years until his passing, but fear not, for the story doesn't end there. Enter collector extraordinaire Teresa Martin, who had her sights set on reuniting Ava Hart with her long-lost doll. She reached out to Ava Hart and struck a deal to become the doll's caretaker. To authenticate the doll's head, it was fitted into the original manufacturer's mold, way back in 1906. Sure enough, it was the real deal. Now, we know what you're thinking. The doll's head may have seen better days. Signs of deterioration including missing hair and barnacle coverings gave it an eerie appearance. But this doll holds immense historical value. In fact, it's thought that the doll will fetch thousands at auction. Despite its worn out exterior, collectors and history enthusiasts alike are eager to get their hands on this unique piece of Titanic story. Hmm, we're not so sure we'd want to own this doll. What about you guys? Carpet. Prepare to be amazed by a heartwarming tale connecting a simple piece of carpeting to the majestic Titanic. Who knew carpet could be so important? At the Harland and Wolf shipyard in Belfast, dining room steward Frederick Dent Ray was discarding scraps of carpet before the Titanic set sail. Mr. Ray asked for permission to keep one, which he carefully tucked into his bag. Little did he know this act would tie him to the Titanic's legacy. Surviving the sinking, Mr. Ray used the carpet to build a music stool, honoring the ship and his wife. The Titanic carpeting provided the perfect padding, transforming the remnant into a comfortable seat. Years later, while moving, Mr. Ray rediscovered the stool and opened it, revealing the precious piece of carpeting. Recognizing its historical value, he selflessly donated it to the Titanic Historical Society. Wow, what a lucky find. Keys 
Samuel Ernest Hemming, the lamp trimmer aboard the RMS Titanic, had an extensive career at sea, starting at age 15. Sadly, at 43, he found himself on the ill-fated Titanic, Hemming played a crucial role in preparing and loading lifeboats, ensuring they had lamps. Amazingly, he survived the disaster and was rescued by lifeboat number 4. Fast forward to the present day, Hemming's keys are part of a collection consigned to Christie's Auction by David Gainsborough Roberts. The collection includes notable items like Lawrence of Arabia's desert robe, Queen Victoria's drawers, and John Lennon's cufflinks, holding immense historical significance. Yep, you could be the proud owner of Hemming's keys to the ship. These aren't just any old keys, these are the keys of a hero. Titanic Deck Plan An extraordinary deck plan from the Titanic, once owned by the Strauss couple, is set to be auctioned for 50,000 pounds. The tragic fate of the Strauss couple unfolded as they chose to stay together during the sinking. Witness accounts recall them sitting on deck chairs holding hands until they were swept into the sea. Now that's a heartbreaking image. Believe it or not, only three original deck plans are known to exist. With this being the final one available for auction, measuring 41 by 29 inches, it has survived nearly a century and is estimated to fetch 40,000 pounds to 50,000 pounds due to its historical significance. Now, let's delve into the origin of this extraordinary deck plan. These plans were distributed to the first class passengers upon their arrival on the Titanic in Southampton on April 10, 1912. They were invaluable guides, providing a detailed layout of the ship's top five decks, including luxurious first-class accommodations and facilities such as restaurants, swimming baths, gymnasiums, and squash courts. Each room was meticulously numbered in red ink, and the plan offered in intricate details of the interiors, including beds, wash basins, and wardrobes. Yep, this deck plan was like the ultimate guide to the Titanic. No wonder it's being auctioned for such a huge amount of money. How much would you pay to own a piece of history? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Launch Ticket An unused perforated ticket to the launch of the Titanic from its shipyard in Belfast back in May 1911 has recently been sold at auction for an astounding $56,250. Yes, $56,250 for an old ticket. That's a whole lot of cash. According to the experts at Bonhams, this ticket is the only untorn ticket from the launch event that has surfaced to date. It's a true gem, a one-of-a-kind artifact that offers a glimpse into the early stages of the Titanic construction and the anticipation surrounding its grand debut. Now, it's important to mention that this ticket was not for the ill-fated voyage that occurred nearly a year later. Instead, this granted you access to the launch event. Nevertheless, this ticket holds immense historical significance as a memento from the ship's early days. This is one valuable ticket. Light Up Cane This is the legendary cane of Titanic survivor Ella White, which played a crucial role in guiding her lifeboat to safety on that fateful night of the sinking. And guess what? It's about to hit the auction block. Equipped with a battery-powered light in its amber-colored bakelite head, it became Ella White's beacon of hope in the darkness of that night. As her lifeboat ventured towards a nearby ship for rescue, the cane served as a guiding light, navigating her to safety. We can't imagine what would have happened to the people on that lifeboat if Ella hadn't had her trusty cane. And not only that, but this cane is believed to be the only surviving one of its kind. Experts estimate that the cane could fetch an astonishing sum of up to $500,000 at auction. Yes, half a million dollars. Now that's one expensive cane. Life Jackets The Titanic Museum attraction in Branson, Missouri hosted a truly special exhibition that would make any history enthusiast's heart skip a beat. From March to June 15, 2019, visitors had the incredible opportunity to witness something extraordinary the largest collection of life jackets ever assembled in one place. The exhibition showcased 7 out of the 12 known surviving life jackets from the ill-fated RMS Titanic. These life-saving garments carried the weight of history and provided a glimpse into the harrowing events of that tragic night. One of the star attractions of the exhibition was the life jacket worn by Lady Duff Gordon's secretary, Laura Francielli. Lady Duff Gordon was a famous figure in the fashion industry and a well-known dress designer. Her clientele included European royalty, high society members, and even celebrities of the time. 
Lady Duff Gordon was a trailblazer in many ways, credited with popularizing runway-style fashion shows and making models famous. She was even the first fashion designer to market a branded perfume. Lady Duff Gordon, known as Lucy, was a survivor who found herself aboard a lifeboat with 11 others. While they waited to be rescued by the ship Carpathia, the survivors did something quite extraordinary. They signed each other's life jackets. This signed life jacket took center stage during the exhibition, holding a place of honor. This is a life jacket that holds quite a bit of history. Bottles of Champagne During expeditions to the Titanic wreck in the 1990s, alcohol bottles were discovered, still containing champagne. Now that's a cause for celebration, if we ever heard one. One notable find was a 1907 Hyde and Company Monopole Champagne, purchased by Hulet House Hotel in Hong Kong for $11,000. Experts examined these salvaged champagnes, revealing details like the well-preserved Hyde and Co. Monopole blend of Pinot Noir, with floral and toasted notes. Mmm, sounds fancy. Not bad for a bottle of fizz that's been sitting at the bottom of the ocean for over a hundred years. As you can imagine, these rare bottles are highly valued, with estimates reaching up to $100,000 each. Wow, at that price, it would seem like a waste to drink a drop of this one-of-a-kind champagne. Mimosas, anyone? Jewelry Deep Sea investigation company Magellan recently made an intriguing find in the wreckage of the Titanic, and it involves a necklace carrying a tooth from a prehistoric shark called the Megalodon. Yep, you heard us right, a Megalodon. Now, that's not what we were expecting at all. This fascinating necklace has been resting at the bottom of the ocean for over a century since the Titanic met its tragic fate in 1912. Magellan, as part of their ambitious project to create a full-size digital scan of the Titanic, made the captivating discovery. Their underwater scanning project is touted as the largest of its kind, and it has unveiled incredible images that reveal a gold necklace adorned with a tooth from the extinct shark species. Otudus Megalodon, which prowled the Earth over 23 million years ago. Now let's dive deeper into the world of the Megalodon. These massive creatures were the stuff of legend, surpassing the size of any shark we know today. They were known for their incredible speed and power, capable of devouring an orca in just a few bites. While the necklace with the Megalodon tooth has been identified, there are restrictions in place regarding the removal of artifacts from the Titanic wreckage, as there should be. However, Magellan is not one to give up easily. They are exploring the potential of using cutting-edge AI-driven technology, such as facial recognition, to identify the owner of the jewelry and locate any surviving family members. By carefully scrutinizing footage of passengers boarding the Titanic, they hope to catch glimpses of the necklace being worn, which would aid in the process of identifying its original owner. Yes, AI might just save the day when it comes to this insane piece of jewelry. Welcome to the future. Whistle Harold Lowe, a brave fifth officer on the Titanic, commanded Lifeboat 14 and aided in rescuing survivors. Yes, this guy was a real hero. His engraved whistle, potentially associated with his courageous actions, is set to be auctioned. While it's unclear if it was used that night, it holds historical value. Estimated worth ranges from $2,526 to $3,788 appealing to collectors and Titanic enthusiasts. That's one expensive whistle. Lowe's role was portrayed by Ion Grufford in James Cameron's film Titanic, further immortalizing his bravery forever. So if you've got a spare couple of thousand dollars lying around, you could take home a piece of the real Titanic history. This is one whistle that is worth every penny.